And good morning. I barely saw Jesse Stone back here. Glad to have you at church this morning and those who are viewing virtually. We're glad you joined in this morning. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas and you got everything you wanted. I know I did. So thank God for that. We had 45 present in Sunday school with an offering of $1,332 to come through Sunday school. A few announcements. Don't forget, I'm going to read this. This is our Lottie Moon offering. This is a message from Dr. Paul Cliffwood, president of International Missionary IMB. I'll just say that. You're a part of this eternal work through your giving, your prayer, your sending, and your going. Every church, regardless of the size or resources, has a part to play in reaching every nation with the gospel. And the nations are waiting. Thank you for you doing your part. We are at $2,445 of our $5,000 goal for Lottie Moon. So if you haven't given, please pray about that. What God would put on your heart to give, and we want to try to make that go we've got what one more week miss betty probably one more week to try to reach that goal so if you haven't given please pray about that also don't forget friday january 1st is happy new year we're on the week of another year let's pray that 2021 is a little better than 2020 but i will say this god has truly blessed our church and truly blessed my family for sure in 2020 regardless of the situations and i hope he has yours also don't forget monday january 4th it's WMU meeting at 6 o'clock. That is a week from Monday, so keep that in mind, ladies. And also, don't forget to pick up your offering and tithes envelopes in the back. Your boxes are back there on the bench. If you do not have a box, just see Miss Carolyn McBroom, and she'll make sure to get you some with your numbers that you like or whatever number she has. But if you don't have a box of tithes and offerings envelope, just please see Miss Carolyn. But don't forget on your way out to pick them up if you haven't picked them up yet. For the year 2021 also don't forget this week well let's go back to today today at 4 30 is a budget committee meeting today at 4 30 for those who are on that committee so don't forget about that also the year-end budget meeting is wednesday december 30th coming up wednesday night please be here if you want to know where we're spending our money where god has put on our hearts to to put our money so that's uh you'll know exactly where the money's going so if you'd like to be here so please be here if you can also, emergency meeting this Wednesday, December 30th, we'll have an emergency meeting to address the January worship services in light of recommendations from Governor Lee. And I'm going to let Brother Charles talk about that just for just a second. You mind, Brother Charles? discussion um, Wednesday night after our uh, budget meeting just to discuss that to see whether we want to go as we've already planned and voted upon or in light of his recommendation make a change to that and so that's going to be Wednesday night uh, so Wednesday night there's two things that we'll address as a church one will be uh, the, the the annual budget um, prayerfully that won't take too long um, and then the other is um, whether we continue to do as planned, which is can just completely open up on January 3rd or um, do virtual for the 30 days asked by Governor Lee. And so that's going to be what that is. Can be part of that. If you have any concerns, be part of that. Also, don't forget, Sunday school material is still in the back if you haven't got any. So get your Sunday school books and be here for Sunday school. All right. If you're not coming for Sunday school, you are missing a blessing. I know that our class is really low on numbers. We've been joining Mr. Marvin, and I have really enjoyed that. So thank you, Mr. Marvin, for teaching Sunday school and all those other teachers who stepped up and volunteered for the teaching Sunday school. So, so come be part of Sunday school. Are there any more announcements? Okay. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. So come be part of that Wednesday night for discussion so the church will decide Wednesday night which direction we are going. Anything else? If not, Mr. H.P., we open some prayer, please. It's so great to be in God's house for the last Sunday in 2020. Amen. I want to do something a little different. I hadn't asked permission, so I will take, Brother Charles, my floggings publicly after service this morning. Um, but this is the last Sunday in 2020. And, and I just want us to spend just a little bit of time in prayer this morning. Whether we've, It's been rough. Uh, we've had problems, we've had killer hornets, killer bees, COVID, personal problems, family problems in 2020. And I just, we need to lay that down. This is the last Sunday in 2020. Let's lay that down at the foot of Jesus this morning before we sing. And, and, and let's just lay that down. So I, I, I'm going to ask Ms. Dorothy, I didn't tell her this either, so she'll probably pu publicly flogging later. Um, just to play something just quietly in the background as we go to the Lord this morning, just praying and giving everything that's gone wrong in our life in 2020 to God. And just, let's leave that in 2020. Let's leave that in 2020. And look, let's look at 2021 as some, a new chapter. A new chapter. So I just, I just want, I want her to play something quietly as, as we just spend a, about five minutes in prayer, giving all that to God. All the hurt that we felt in 2020, anything like that. And then we also need to pray for Nashville. Um, we also need to pray for Nashville. And, and after five minutes, I'm going to ask Brother Charles, if he does not mind, to pray for 2021. To pray for the lost in 2021, pray for Macedonia in 2021, that we have a heart set on fire for God in 2021. So as, as she plays, just for, just for a little bit of time, let us go to the Lord this morning. And leave it at his feet. Because the Bible says if we leave it at his feet, it stays there. It stays there. Satan's not going to get a hold of it. So let's give 2020 to God and stop praying and, and then pray for 2021. So let's just spend a couple of minutes as she plays softly and let's pray. Give it all to him.
declares, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God, may we be as David and acknowledge our sin before you. May we be as David and repent. May we be as David and realize, Father, that the weeping may last for the night, but joy, praise God, comes in the morning. God, 2020 has been a rough year. God, many people have lost loved ones. Many people have lost jobs. But God, I think in a lot of ways, we've lost our passion and our zeal for you. God, renew our passion for you. Renew a zeal, Father God, that is undeniable. May we as a people, may we as a church be a church on fire for you. God, may we have a passion for the lost in our community like never before. God, I, I don't want to hear of Macedonia. That, that's the church that used to reach out to the community. I, I want to hear of Macedonia that that's a church that still reaches out to the community. I don't want to hear that that church had a passion for missions. I want to hear that church has a passion for missions. God, let it be known that we worship you and we serve you. God, you're at the forefront. And you're at the focus. And God, as we enter into 2021 and we leave 2020, let our focus be on the cross. Let our focus be on the mission of winning souls for Christ. Knowing the day is fixing to break. Knowing that time is at hand. And knowing we're running out of time. So let us seek to get ourselves right. And let us seek to tell others about you. And let there be mending and healing where there needs to be. And let there be joy where there are once tears. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's leave 2020 at the footsteps of Jesus. Let's leave it though and look forward to 2021. Let's reclaim Macedonia by his trust to be a tabernacle of prayer. Let's reclaim it for what it's supposed to be not a country club it's a tabernacle of prayer as we stand to sing 225 i want to remind everyone and this is probably where i'm going to get my public flogging that these altars are open throughout the whole service we we we, they're not closed in the singing port they're not closed in the preaching port if you god's calling you to pray come up here and pray if god's calling you to come up here and pray for the pastor pray for the pastor let's surround our pastor in 2021 with prayer Let's surround this church in prayer. So as we sing, there's power in the blood because the blood cleanses us and makes us white as snow. So let's sing, there's power in the blood. Let us sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood Would you O evil A victory won There's wonderful Power in the blood Let's sing about his blood There is power Power Wondering working power In the blood Of the Lamb There is power
for a preacher as he comes. Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, and I pray you do, open up to Psalm 30. Psalm 30. As you turn there, I will give you a humorous story. I think I've told this before. Every time I sing, there is power in the blood. I love that song. I really do. But I'm reminded of my second pastor. There's a reason why I don't do specials very often. Um, I challenged the church, I told the church, I said, if you get over 100, they had been averaging about 50, I said, if you ever get 100 on Sunday morning, I'll sing a special. They did that. They got 100, and I got up that morning, and I, and I sang there was power in the blood, and I kid you not, after I got done singing, or in the middle of my singing, two of the children's workers from the back come out front, and they get over here on the side, and I'm like, man, I must be getting this down right. I said, they, they are here to support me. I got done singing. They looked at me, and they said, we had to come out and see who was doing that because it sounded like somebody was throwing scalding hot water on a pack of dogs. <laughs> Needless to say, it took them a year to get another 100 on Sunday morning. So every time I hear that song now, I just shake my head. I, I love the song, but I always have a giggle in the back reminding myself, don't sing this too loud, Charles. Don't sing this too loud. Amen. Psalm 30. Discipline. I've not ever really met anybody that likes being disciplined. Um, uh, you know, Dr. Spock said, you can't spank your child because it'll quench their personality. If that's the case, I would hate to see what my personality would have been had my mama not quenched it out of me many times growing up. But we don't like discipline. But disciplines are necessary things. But one of the things that I do like about discipline, though, is that it doesn't last too long. Normally, normally, you know, nobody likes to get grounded, but we know if we get grounded from something, it's going to come to an end. No, nobody like getting tore up on it. When I say tore up, you know what I mean, spanked. Uh, but my mom, my mom would tell me that, that, I was the, uh, that I was grass and she was the lawnmower and she was going to run over the top of it and, and, and not let me seek for a week. So that was my mom. 
And, 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 and the only thing I could think of why she was wearing my hindquarters out was well, this ain't going to last long. Eventually, she's going to get tired of that paddle's going to break. And so I sat back and I, I look at all this, but nobody liked it for the moment. Amen? Nobody liked discipline growing up. Nobody likes discipline even as an adult. Uh, uh, kids think that adults just don't ever get in trouble. They don't even know, right? I mean, we all get in trouble. We all, if you're a man at, at this point, you need to be doing this if you're man and married because you know you get in trouble. Don't act like you don't. Uh, but with, with that said, David understood that. David understood discipline. Okay, David got in trouble all the time. And one of, one of the times that David got in trouble, God was mad at Israel. We don't really know the exact reason that, that God was mad at Israel. We, we can suspect that maybe uh, they, did not, they weren't observing the Torah, the books of the law, those first five books of the Bible, the way they should. But in this process, it says that God told David in 2 Samuel to begin to number the Israelites. Whatever the process done, whether David did that out of an egotistical thing or he did it the wrong way, we don't know. But God got mad at David in the process. And we find that in the process of that, a plague came along. And a plague came, and in fact, before that plague came, the prophet, I believe it was Nehemiah, I may be wrong, came to David and said, you have three options, my man. First option, the first option is, is, you can be chased by your enemy for three months. David said, I don't want that one. He said, you can have a famine in your land for three years. He said, the third option is, you can have a plague for three days. At the end of that, David looked out and he said, he said I tell you what, I'm going to put myself at the mercy of God. God's a just God. God will discipline me justly, and I give it to him. After three days, or we would assume three days, some 70,000 men in Israel had died. David come before the prophet, and he dropped to his knees and said, I take responsibility. Ask God for mercy. It's my sin that caused the problem. And we know that God step back and he stopped bringing the plague on Israel and when we come to the 30th Psalm we come to David's reflection of what happened in a heart of repentance and the verse that I love the most we'll get to but Psalm 30 beginning with verse 1 and if you're there say amen he says I will extol thee O Lord for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. One of my favorite passages right here. For his, endure, for his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. But joy cometh in the morning. Let's pray. And Heavenly Father, we come before you, and Father, we seek you this morning. God, we had asked that you would remind us that your discipline is but for a season. That God, joy does eventually come in the morning. God, as I have prayed, and the only thing I could think of was joy comes in the morning. God, 2020 has been a hard year. That doesn't mean 2021 is going to get any easier. It's going to be better. But God, I am a firm believer that eventually the night's going to end and the day's going to break and there's going to be joy in the morning. And so God, as we deal with discipline, as we deal with judgment, may we be reminded, it's but for a season, that you're still sovereign. You're still in control. You're still on your throne. 
And God, eventually you will bring joy to your chastisement. God, we love you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We ask that you be honored and glorified throughout this message. May it be you that speak to your people. May it be you that exhort your people. May it be you that encourage your people. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. David understood something that most of us need to learn, and that's praise despite discipline. Praise despite discipline. In verse 1, he says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. David understood that even in the discipline of God, there was mercy. Even in the midst of, uh, even in the midst of discipline of God, it could have been far worse than what it actually was. He had lost 70,000 men, but in the reality, when God brings judgment, David could have lost every last bit of his kingdom, amen? When God brings judgment, he can do whatever he wants to, and he can take it as far as he wants to. But we find within the judgment of God, when, 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 when David went to the threshing floor of, A- of Adnan uh, and, and, and built the altar and gave praise to God there, that God relinquished his judgment that's found in second samuel by the way and so god understood i mean david understood that he was going to praise god despite his discipline despite the persecution despite what had happened he was still going to praise god so david led the people in israel to praise the lord i will extol thee O lord and so if i'm going to ta- if i'm going to lead this church in any way going into 2021 i want you to understand this morning i will lead you in praising the lord amen Despite what happens, despite what has happened in 2020, despite what's going to happen in 2021, because the reality of it is none of us know what tomorrow holds, but praise God, we know who holds tomorrow in his hands, amen? That we ain't got to worry about tomorrow. We ain't got to worry about the next day. In fact, we know, as Jesus said, that we just need to get through today because today has enough problems on its own, amen? And so we need to learn to be able to praise God despite our circumstances. Praise God. Despite what the situation may lie around us, despite who's in the White House, despite who's in Congress, it really doesn't matter. God is still on his throne. We need to praise God despite the economy. Praise God despite what the, what the COVID is doing and whether it's increase or decrease. We need to learn to praise God even in the midst of our storms and even in the midst of discipline. Amen? Right? I guess some of y'all need to be encouraged. Y'all need to go back to like kindergarten, preschool, worship or something where you you can learn to clap. And, and do y'all remember VBS where you could, you know, you, 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 you would clap and you'd sing and you'd praise God? That's what we need in the church today. Amen? Paul writes that I wish holy men everywhere were pr- raising their hands and praising God. We need to learn to praise God in spite of our storm. David realized why the discipline of the Lord was taking place. He had come to the point of being broken and stood in the gap and acknowledge his sin before the Lord. May we learn to acknowledge our sin before the Lord. May we learn to be broken in the process. Most of the time when we face discipline, most of the time when we're being getting on to, we don't like it and we get defensive. Look, I got five daughters, bless every one of them, okay? I, I, I'm almost certain that at some point in the day, I'm the enemy of every last one of them. And what I have noticed growing up is they got the same attitude I had when I was their age. When my mom and dad would get on to me, I'd sit there and look at my mom and dad like, what in the world? Have you lost your mind? What did I do so bad for you to get on to me like that? Now that I'm a parent, I get that same look. And at the moment, I can't look at and say, I understand, because they, 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 you ain't never been a kid. You know, we, we parents, we came out as full-grown adults. We ain't never been a kid. But we got that same mindset, even as adults, somebody getting on to us because we've done something wrong, we want to get defensive. Maybe we need to do the same thing I tell my children. Learn to accept responsibility. Learn to acknowledge when we've done wrong. And learn to repent. Amen? Rather than getting defensive, be as David. And David, finally at the end of it in 2 Samuel, said, God, I'm the one that's messed up. I'm the one that's messed up. My sin is the one... This hurting all these people. God, I'm begging you, stop. Let us no longer look at sin of others but our own and be broken. This truly is the acceptable sacrifice of the Lord. 
Psalm 51 and 17 says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and tried heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. After, after being broken over his sin, David built an altar in the threshing floor of Arnon the Jebusite, and he, he began to lead the people to praise the Lord. So brothers and sisters, if we want to overcome the plagues in our life, in this pandemic, we must learn to begin to repent and praise the Lord no matter the situation. Amen? Learn to praise Him in our storm no matter. Praise Him when we've messed up. Praise Him in the midst of our discipline. May we become known as a people of prayer and praise. Just as David knew what it was like to be drawn out of the well of sin, may we learn to praise God for the same. Because that brings us to the other point. Not only did David led the people in praise to the Lord, but David acknowledged his position through praise. For thou hast lifted me up. When I began to look at that, I thought of somebody just being lifted up. Just being, just being, just, you know, you fall on the floor and you lift them up, but really there's a picture being drawn in the Hebrew tongue in this word lifted, which comes a little deeper than that. It is actually the idea of a pale being lowered down into the well to draw up water. It is a picture of God going as deep as we can in our sin. As deep in the well of sin that we've been in, and God lays down in a rope and a pail and picks us up out of the pit of the sin that we're in, no matter how deep, no matter how dirty, no matter how dark our situation, our circumstances may be, that God literally sends down a pail and He picks us up and He brings us up out of that pit. Brothers and sisters, we need to be praising God because no matter how deep our sin is, no matter how deep our rebellion is, in that well that we decide to wallow in, God is still big, bold, and strong enough and gracious enough to bring us up out of that pit of sin. Amen? And David understood that. And David praised God for that. In fact, he writes in Psalm 40 and 2, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And that miry clay is the deepest and darkest part. It's the very bottom of the pit. It's nasty and it's slimy and it's sticky and it's gooey and it don't want to let you go. He says, he brought me up out of that miry clay and set my foot upon a rock and established my going. I praise God this morning that our Lord, that our Lord reached down into the darkest of pits and brought us up out of it and put us on a solid rock this morning. Amen. That no matter how far and the deep in that well we are, he picks us up. He puts us out on that, on that clock and establishes our going. No matter our sin, no matter our plague, there is but one answer, and that answer is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can change us and our situation. David knew that the reason why he was where he was is because he put himself there. It was his thought, his mind, his action that got him there. And the only one that was going to change it was God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many shots we have. I don't care how many masks we wear. I don't care how long we social distance. There's only one person that's going to bring an end to COVID, and that's our God Almighty. There's only one, one, there's only one person that can heal the condition and the spiritual immaturity and apathy and, and lethargy that's in the church of God in America today, and that is God Almighty. It is time for His people to wake up and say, God, I'm sorry for being apathetic. God, I'm sorry for rebelling against you. God, I'm sorry for questioning you. God, I'm sorry for ignoring you. God, I'm sorry for not having a genuine heart of praise, a genuine heart of worship, a genuine heart of service. And God, I'm sorry. Lift me up out of this pit and put me on a solid ground. We need to realize that He is the only one that can remove the discipline, remove the judgment, and permit healing. The Lord brings discipline to His children. He, he does this out of love, and he, he also brings healing. We must begin to acknowledge our position before the Lord in the, in the midst of discipline and to learn to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for He is patient and merciful even in the midst of discipline as David led the people in praise in full view of his position. He knew he was the cause of discipline. He knew he was the cause of judgment. He knew that everything had done wrong. He fell before God. He began to praise God and God brought mercy. May we learn that today. 
Let us realize God's grace even in the midst of discipline. For David was aware of God's grace in his situation. And he says, and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. David understood his enemies could take him out. God could have destroyed him. God could have destroyed his kingdom. God could have done whatever he wanted to. But even in the midst of discipline, even in the midst of judgment, God showed mercy. Brothers and sisters, may we understand God doesn't give us what we deserve most of the time, if not all the time. Let's just be real about it. My parents didn't give me what I deserved most of the time. They never gave me the full blunt of their frustration and anger. If they had, I wouldn't be here right now. If you're here this morning, you need to praise God for mercy and grace. If God disciplines, you need to praise him because he's showing you you're his child. Nobody likes discipline. The discipline is there to teach us, to love us, to show us right from wrong. David was aware of God's grace in his situation, and may we be as well. Which brings us to verses 2 through 4, which is praise, praise, praise. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Praise God for the hearing and prayers and mending wounds. Brother Marvin hit the nail on the head in Sunday school this morning. Sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers the way he wants to the way we want him to. Sometimes he doesn't answer them near as fast as we'd like. But let us learn to praise God for hearing our prayers and mending our wounds. O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. Brothers and sisters, when David cried out to God and said, God, show mercy on the people. It's me that's messed up. It's me that has sinned. It's me that has brought this on the people. God heard him. And I want you to understand this morning some, to, some of us, our prayers aren't being heard because of sin in our life. Psalm 50, I mean, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says that his ear and deaf that he can't hear, it's not his hand is shortened that he can't heal, but it's because of our sin in our life that he can't hear our prayers. But I guarantee you God hears every prayer of repentance. He hears every prayer of repentance. He hears every prayer of the righteous. And I guarantee you he answers every last one of them. His answer may be yes, it may be no, it may be wait, but he answers prayers. And we need to learn to start praising God for hearing our prayers and mending our wounds. Amen? We may have a limp when it's all said and done, but so did Jacob. He limped the rest of his life but he still survived. God could have killed him, but he just gave him a limb. Brothers and sisters, if I have to go through my life with a, with a scar, if I have to go through my life with a limp, that's all right as long as God's by my side and he brings the healing, amen? Praise God for life when there should be death. Praise God for life when there should be death. O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. David understood what the alternative was. David understood that he should be dead at this point in time. He understood he shouldn't have been alive. We should know this today in Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I wonder how many of us this morning don't forgot that the wages of sin is death, that each and every one of us should be on death's doorstep right now because of sin in our life, if not already in the grave. But God chose to pay that penalty for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. David knew when he sinned against God that he deserved death. 
but he praised God that life and favor were in his hands. O oh Lord, thou hast brought my soul up from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Maybe you just need, instead of, instead of griping at God this morning, maybe we need to learn just to go to praise God and thank him for where we're at and what we got. Just learn to praise God where, where, where we're at. Thank him for not bringing full judgment, but showing mercy in that judgment. And we need to praise God for his righteousness. We need to praise God for hearing our prayers and mending our wounds. We need to praise God for life when there should be death. And we need to learn to praise God for his righteousness. He says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. May we understand this morning, according to Acts 10 and 34, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care how much money is in your checking account. He doesn't care whether you've been in church nine months before you were born. He doesn't care who, who, what your last name is or what position you hold. All he cares about is your relationship with him and the condition of your soul. Praise him for it. Praise him for it. Praise him that he's no respecter of persons. We need to realize that we need to praise God because he's the one that knows the heart, Psalm 44 and 21. That God knows us when we truly repent. God knows where our heart really is. If you were to ask me on the surface if David was a man after God's own heart, I would say, let me see, he is a murderer. He is an adulterer. He is a liar. He is a conniver. He was egotistical. He had all these different things. On the surface, not a chance. But God knew his heart. And despite all David's shortcomings, he wanted to live right for God. And when his sin was called out, he repented. As far as I can tell from the scripture, there wasn't another Bathsheba or Uriah in David's life. As far as I can tell in the scripture, I don't, I don't believe David numbered the people again. Yeah, David prayed some powerful prayers and honest prayers. But God knew his heart. God knows your heart this morning. So what does he see? Does he see one whose lack of repentance is going to give birth to judgment? Does he see one that, although they keep messing up, truly they want to do right? Because God knows the heart. And God judges justly with righteousness. And David says, praise him for it. David did as the Lord would do. He committed himself to the Lord, knowing the Lord judges righteously and may we do the same thing during our times of discipline look at God and say God I acknowledge it I, I I do not deny it I acknowledge it I repent of it but Lord I get what I deserve as Peter wrote in first Peter 2 and 23 who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously. May we do as Peter instructs and learns to call upon the Father in our time of need and time of repentance, both in re reverential fear. As in Peter wrote in 1 and 17, and if you call on the Father, who with respect, without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. You know why? I didn't get more spankings than I did growing up outside of my mom's grave. Because it only took about one or two spankings before I realized 
I don't need to do that again. It only took about one or two groundings before I realized that's not very smart of me to do that. And so I began to realize what I could do without getting in trouble and what I couldn't do with get, and I decided that I always like to be on my mom and dad's good side rather than their bad side, amen? So I, I loved my mother and father, but I also had a healthy fear of my mother and father. When I was younger, to be honest with you, I had been smacked up across the wall enough, I, I had a fear of my dad that wasn't healthy. But when I got older, my dad found the Lord. It was a healthy fear. Because my mom and dad loved me. But they were still the authority of my life. If you're a child of God this morning, you need to understand this very simple truth. And it's a very simple truth to hold on. If you're a child of God, God is the authority in your life. And you need to have fear of God. Whether you're a child of God or not, you need to fear him. But if you're his child, understand when he disciplines you, it's for a purpose. Praise him in that storm. Praise him in that discipline. And praise God, joy comes in the morning. For his anger, in verse 5, for his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise God, his judgment is but for a season. For his anger endureth but for a moment. It's like I told you when I was younger. Either mom would get tired of swinging and that paddle would break, but I knew eventually there would be an end to what was happening. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how long COVID is going to happen, but I know eventually there's going to be an end. I don't know how long droughts and plagues and life are going to go in your life, but I know eventually whatever storm you're going through will come to an end. At the end of the day, whatever discipline God sends our way, it is only for a season. Amen? What I have learned in those seasons of life where I know that God is trying to teach me something, sometimes I don't ask for God to, get me, to take me out of it. I ask God to teach me the lesson that I need to learn from it and pull me to the other side pretty quick. Because sometimes I need to go through that to learn my lesson. Amen? Give you a quick example. I drove with my dad down a road one time. It was the back side of my house. Going down the road, the speed limit was 25 miles an hour. I was with my dad in my little car. We were driving 70 miles an hour down that road. My dad looked at me and he said, son, one day you're going to get stopped by the cops going down this road this fast. I said, dad, them cops don't ever come down this road. He said, Charles, I'm telling you now, one day you're going to get stopped. I said, no, dad, it's fine. We're good. I do this all the time. He said, okay. He warned me. About two weeks later, I was going down that same road at Sam Speed, and I looked up and I saw a white car pulling behind me. I slammed on them brakes. By the time I stopped, I did a California stop. I got up, to, the light started flashing, he pulled me up, and he got a cop come up to me and looked at me, and he said, son, he said, I locked you at 36 and clocked you at 35, and we both know you were going a lot faster than that. I just couldn't catch up in time. I came home that evening. I dropped my, te my keys up on the TV, dropped my wallet up on the TV. My dad looked at me, and you have to understand, from where that cop had me to where my front window was, Wolf diagonal on a straight view and the blinds were open. He just looked at me and grinned. He's sipping on his coffee. He said, what happened? Get pulled over by the cops. God will warn us. But eventually judgment comes. Amen. But it's for a season. Praise God. His, bless, his pleasure brings forth strength and vitality. And his favor is life. And praise God for shouts of joy come at the break of dawn. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know how long. Every one of us have a storm this morning. Some of us have multiple storms. 
and I don't know how long you're going to endure it. Some storms last longer than the other. But I want you to hear this biblical truth. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Eventually the clouds break. Eventually the clouds break. The rain ceases. The thunder goes away. And the rainbow shows. And the light shines. And joy comes in the morning. May we learn to praise God and discipline, knowing it's for our benefit, our growth, that he disciplines us. May we praise God, knowing that his discipline is but for a season. And as the scripture says, overnight. But in the end, God brings shouts of joy in the morning. Everybody stand, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As Miss Dorothy comes, you just go ahead and start playing, Miss Dorothy. You go ahead and start playing. The altar's open. You don't have to wait till I get done praying, but every head bowed and every eye closed. God is dealing with you. Come on. You come on. Father, we come before you this morning. And God, we seek you. We pray, Father God, that if there's anyone here this morning that just needs to come and pray, that they'll come and pray. God, may we be reminded at the dawn of a new year that, God, your joy comes in the morning. That, God, your mercies and grace start afresh every day. God, you'll be honored during this invitation if there's anyone here this morning that doesn't know your son Jesus, that they'll walk this aisle and say, I need him. For he is our hope, he is our comfort, and he is our peace that surpasses understanding. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Every head bowed and every being here this morning and um, invite you to tune in with us on Facebook Live tonight, uh, virtually at 615. Brother Matt will be bringing that message tonight, fourth Sunday night of each month. Of course, he preaches, and so I'm looking forward to the message that God has laid on his heart. Uh, do not forget those who are on the budget committee meeting. Um, we have a meeting today at 430. Brother HP has already shown me a couple of things that I need to change 
on the paperwork that I've given um, everybody so far. Um, and so um, if for some reason uh, you've seen any other changes that need to be done, please let me know. You can call me this afternoon. Um, I'll be up here about 3 o'clock um, to work on that. And with that said, if you were not here last Sunday, I want to wish you a, a belated Merry Christmas. Um, and since you're here this Sunday, I want to—I hope to be the first to tell you Happy New Year. And, and I do pray that it is a Happy New Year. Uh, with that said, uh, Brother Terry, if you don't mind, will you dismiss us? <laughs>